Ladies and gentlemen, what a pleasure it is to be with you to open this Cybos 2022. Our theme, Progressive Finance for a Changing World, could not be more timely. The rise of inclusive finance is a genuine good news story at a moment of great challenges. Over the last decade, a quarter of the world's adult population has gained access to financial services. Fully 76% of adults are now in some way included. This is a remarkable achievement, which has unlocked new opportunities for millions of people previously left behind. Investments in critical digital public infrastructure, such as greater connectivity and digital IDs, have laid the foundation for this amazing growth. And the rise of digital payments has driven a massive increase in account ownership. In the last four years, almost 40% of adults in developing economies opened their first account to receive a wage or a government payment. Millions of small merchants are now paid or making payments with their own phones in their own pockets, transforming their ability to manage their finances and invest in their businesses. This, in turn, has enabled financial service providers, especially new fintech players, to innovate in the design and delivery of new products and services. The rapid growth in mobile phone use and new customer data trails offer exciting new ways to deliver financial products by leveraging big data and AI, especially in emerging markets. Yet, we should not seek innovation for innovation's sake. With each new technology, such as central bank digital currencies, for example, we must always ask, what problems are we trying to solve? And what future are we envisioning to stand the best chance at achieving long-term success? How do we provide more value beyond what existing platforms can already deliver? Well, the first priority is to make sure we do no harm. Ensuring key digital public goods are in place, like cybersecurity, consumer protection, data governance, and digital literacy, can help marginalized communities navigate financial services more safely and in ways that really work for them. Fair competition and interoperable payment systems can help markets work better for even the smaller scale customers. But that is only a first step. We have a chance today to move beyond doing no harm to actually doing good. So beyond transaction volume and customer acquisition, can we create the rails for transformative change to help users become, become more financially healthy? Just as we should not innovate for innovation's sake, we should not design products simply to maximize short-term results. Rather, it is important to see how much value we can generate in the long run. Value for customers that in turn translates into value for firms. For example, one Australian bank invested in measuring financial well-being of their customers to understand their behaviors and to develop products that could help them become more financially healthy. This resulted in a gold tracker program that helped 20% of their non-savers to start saving regularly. How can we do more of this? How can we help people to better manage their day-to-day -day finances, to get access to credit, to plan and meet future goals, and at a time of multiple crises, to build resilience and ensure themselves against shocks? To do so makes real good business sense. Financially healthy customers are better customers, and those who provide these services can differentiate themselves from other providers. But for the moment, that is not what is happening. Today, despite growth in account ownership, only 55% of adults in developing economies can access emergency money within 30 days, 55%. 
And almost half of respondents in a recent survey, including those from OECD countries, therefore rich countries, agreed with the statement, I have no money left at the end of the month. In some places, we have seen both an increase in access to finance and simultaneously a decrease in financial health. So please, let us identify the best solutions to these challenges and really bring them to scale. One approach is to encourage private-private partnerships that provide services across entire value chains. In Côte d'Ivoire, for example, I saw an excellent partnership between an agri-tech platform, we agree, and a company that processes and distributes cashew nuts and a financial sector provider. Together, they were able to combine financial services, market access, business training, and extension services to help women across Cote d'Ivoire's cashew nut sector. This partnership has benefited everyone across the value chain, and it has increased efficiency, transparency, and productivity, supporting local economic development. Collaboration across industry and government is also key to creating inclusive digital public infrastructure that really enables services beyond finance. Think about health. Think about education. These are the building blocks of sustainable development. If we get this right, digital innovation holds tremendous promise for financial inclusion and financial health. So let us please envision that better future, share our experiences, and use this conference, ladies and gentlemen, to build a secure, trusted, and efficient digital economy that really works for all. I really trust that you will actually take it to the next level and you can make a difference in your own countries. Thank you so much.